Hello everyone! Hello, I hope you're well. Good to see you. Um, I haven't done an assembly for a while, so it's quite exciting for me today. Um, so I'm going to be talking about one of our values. I'm going to be talking about curiosity today. Um, but I'm going to be talking about it in the context of something. So I'll talk about that context in a minute. One of the things that we're going to be talking about, though, is we're going to be talking about um, celebrating significant people um, of colour who have had an impact on our daily lives. Um, because, of course, it is Black History Month. So um, I'm going to show you a picture. Uh, here it is. No, it's not. Where is it? It's there. No, it's not. It's here. No, it's not. Oh, come on. Here it is. Right, I'm going to get make myself a little bit smaller so I'm out of the way. So, um, my question to you, who do you think this is? And why do you think they have put up a statue of this person? So really, you need to think about why they put statues up of people in the first place. Hmm. So why do they put statues up? Anybody got any ideas? Yeah, good. Right, I'll tell you why. Um, but I'm sure you've got some good ideas. See if you agree with what I say. They put statues up of people who have had um, a significant impact on people's lives. Um, they also put statues up of people to celebrate them. Um, sometimes statues are put up, um, pe people um, pay for their own statues to be put up because they want to remember themselves in a great way. Uh, and sometimes the people choose to put up a statue. Anyway, this statue has been recently unveiled in Bristol. In fact, I'd say recently, yesterday it was unveiled in Bristol. Um, and it's of a lady called Henrietta Lacks. Um, and she lived from 1920 to 1951. So those of you who are very quick at maths will have worked out by now that she died quite young. She was only 31. Um, a lot younger than me. Um, here's a photo. Um, this is from the paper yesterday. Uh, and this is the celebration that took place when they unveiled the statue. Uh, and these are members of Henrietta Lacks' family uh, who've flown over from America, no less, to Bristol. Uh, and you can also see Marvin Rees, our, our Lord Mayor. Uh, sorry, not our Lord Mayor, our Mayor there, our elected Mayor. <clears throat> He's just above my head. Uh, there's Marvin. Let me do my pointer out. Um, and this uh, statue has been uh, unveiled at Bristol University. And it's it's really important for two reasons. Um, number one, it's of a woman of colour, a black woman. But secondly, it's the first statue uh, in the United Kingdom to be put up, which is not only of a black woman, but it was made by a black woman. And here's, here's the lady making it, Helen Wilson Rowe, a Bristol-based artist um, who's done some incredible work on Henrietta Lacks. But why Henrietta Lacks? What is so special about Henrietta Lacks? Well, we need to delve into her history. So let's go. I didn't know anything about this lady. I've got to be honest. I didn't know anything about this lady until the statue was put up. And that's what's great about statues, because they can generate and they can make you have a conversation about something. Anyway, here's a painting of Henrietta Lacks. Um, this is in the National Portrait Gallery. Um, there she is as a young woman, probably um, depicted uh, her, probably her age here, probably about 29, so a few years before she died. Uh, let's go back in time, though, to 1920 when she was born. She wasn't even born in this country. She was born in America in Virginia. Um, Virginia is a state uh, and it was very famous for um, it's very famous for growing tobacco um, and Henrietta's family um, worked in the tobacco industry. They picked tobacco um, and that's what that was their job. They worked on farms. Anyway when Henrietta was five her mum died while giving birth to her tenth sibling. And as a result, Dad um, couldn't cope. And he moved the family, in Virginia still, and they moved. Uh, and what he, he did, because he couldn't cope on his own, um, the rest of the family uh, looked after the ten children. And Henrietta uh, ended up living with her grandmother. And she lived in somewhere like this. This is a log cabin. Um, this is an old um, uh, slave's quarters. Um, and she lived in, the, uh, in an old slave's quarters in the log cabin. And she grew, she grew up there with her maternal grandmother, so her mum's mum, and her cousin, um, who she didn't know particularly well until they moved in. Anyway, later on, she married her cousin, um, but that's another story. Um, and so that's where she grew up, and um, she started off as a young woman working, um, picking uh, tobacco, and that was her job. 
and then as she uh, grew older, she um, she fell in love with her cousin and they got married and then they decided to move. And they moved not too far. Um, they moved to uh, Baltimore. Then you can see on this map of the United States uh, an arrow showing where Baltimore is. Baltimore is a big city. Um, yeah, a big city on the East Coast. Um, and it was at that time, it was really famous, uh, well known for its steel production. Steel is a uh, metal that's made out of iron. Um, and here's a picture, a picture of the factory that she actually worked in. Here it is. Um, enormous places, hot places, quite dangerous places to work. Um, and she worked in this factory and she worked there and she had a good job. And she, you know, and she started... Um, she lived with her husband and eventually she got pregnant and uh, she had a baby. But when she had her baby, uh, they noticed that there was something not quite right with Henrietta um, because she she was bleeding and she was bleeding a lot. And after some investigation, they discovered that she had uh, a type of cancer called cervical cancer. Um, I'm going to get just to the side so you can see her. And here she is around about. This is near um, about the age that she died um, and she died of a cervical cancer but before she died um, some um, scientists um, some biomedical scientists so people who are interested in advancing science to do with medicine and making people healthy they took a few of her cells um, so we we're made up of millions of cells in our body um, and they took some of her cells and they found that the her cells unlike other cells grew really well in laboratories and when you are doing research on things and you're finding things out and you're learning things and you're using your curiosity to to discover things it's really useful to be able to have human cells and so they took some cells from Henrietta and they found that these cells grew which was very unusual. And they called them the Heller cells, and you can see a picture of them here. Um, and these cells were so useful to uh, biomedical research, to finding things out. And they contributed, her cells um, outlived her. So they, her cells keep, uh, are still around today. Um, and these are the th sorts of things that her cells have been, they're used by scientists in laboratories. So this is um, a photo of a biomedical laboratory uh, and you can see the, the scientists um, are working there. You could be one of those scientists one day. But what was amazing is, is her cells were used to, well, these are a few of the things that they were used for. Let me get out of the way and shrink myself down. There we go. So a disease called polio, which uh, used to debilitate and kill thousands and thousands of people um, her cells were used in the um, in the um, the study of how to get rid of polio um, they've been used in genetics to find out about how we're made up and to identify um, diseases that are genetic the study of cancers so those diseases which affect you know quite a lot of us in later in life um, her cells are used in the study of cancers. Virology, and that, you know, obviously we learn, uh, we, we know a lot about viruses at the moment because of coronavirus. But in the study of viruses, her cells are still used today. The effects of space travel. Her cells have been sent into space to see what effect space travel has on human cells. In fact, over 300,000 pieces of research have been carried out on her cells. Now, it wasn't actually known until 1970 that it was her cells that um, had, were used. And her family, um, rightly so, were quite, not, quite annoyed about the fact that she had no recognition. There was no recognition that her cells, Henrietta's cells, had um, contributed to all these amazing things. Yes, the scientists had done the amazing things with the cells, but it was her cells in the first place. Um, and so, really... Uh, that's what this statue is all about. This statue is about remembering somebody who, even though they didn't know it, their contribution to science has been enormous and has saved probably millions of lives. And 
wh why Bristol though? Why is this statue in Bristol? Well, this statue is in Bristol because Bristol University, where the um, the statue is, has been so important in biomedical research in finding things out about how to treat illnesses, how to work with viruses, and all those things. And that's why it's based in Bristol University. And as I said earlier, her family recognised the importance that Bristol University um, has to Henrietta, and Henrietta has to Bristol University, which is why it's in our amazing city. So there we are. What an interesting story. Um, what I would suggest to you is if you do have chance, um, the statue is in Royal Fort Gardens. Now, Royal Fort Gardens is open to the public all year round. It's a lovely garden. It's got an amazing pond. And it's got a, 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 like a mirror maze in it as well. And it's completely free. It's at the top of Park Street. Uh, and uh, it is signposted near... It's near the Chemistry and Physics Department at Bristol University. But I really recommend you going and having a look at a life-size statue of Henrietta Lacks, the lady who had unknown to her has had such an amazing impact um, on people's lives all around the world so there we are i'm going to just disappear now you can see i'm slowly disappearing already um, i will see you soon um, enjoy the new equipment take care and i'll see you soon bye bye <laughs>